as you know already, the Pelicans have tweaked their coaching staff. I'm going to talk about it, and he's going to talk about it. But y'all got to tune in to the elements that the coaching staff must embrace the most coming into the upcoming season. Got about four of them for you. But before that, you must know that first, can't nothing and nobody fade what we trying to do and what we about to do. Second thing is, we got this game on our level. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of In Space. I am your host, Chris Connor. Still dealing with wisdom to pain, but we here working through it, through the wire, through the fire. Got my dog Lito here. Lito, what's good with you? Oh, uh, man, it's all good. Happy to be here, bro. Anytime you got me on the platform. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 glad to do it. Shout out to our good people at DraftKings Sportsbook. We're gonna get a read from my bill collector at the end of the show, as always. Birdsaw Law Firm, Jaegermeister. I think I still got something with New York life, but I don't know. Man, but, all right, uh, whatever. Um, uh, let's get into it. Uh uh-uh, uh Chad's got like six. He got like a Miller Life sponsorship and everything. He got Miller Life? He on a high life? You ain't you ain't seen that? You don't, you don't see the middle life? All right. Okay, I'm sure, man. All right. Shout out to Chad, man. Um, yeah. So let's get into it. I got about four things. I'm trying to keep this show short. Four things that this new slash tweet coaching staff gotta embrace for this upcoming season. Talk to you me. Ready for it? Talk to All me. Right. Good. I'm gonna start off with number one. We talked about it a little bit on your show. If y'all get a chance, Lito dropped the CJ McCullum show. I was a part of it. Um, title is Oh, should CJ McCullum be the fourth option? To some of y'all, that might sound crazy, but we had a good show talking about it. Justin and Chaz were a part of that as well. So shout out to the crew. Um, but yo, first thing that they gotta embrace bringing out the best parts of Zion and Brandon individually together. Mm. Mm, that's big okay. Time. Yeah, so that means. I've seen Brandon Ingram go crazy and um, play look like a top 15 NBA player to end the season last year. I've seen what he looks like on the run that the Pelicans were on to make the play in the season before and then making the playoffs and going six with Phoenix. I've seen that. How does he maintain that level of play or somewhere close to it with Zion on the floor? Pick up off the floor, on the floor, on the right. floor where he may have the basketball in his hands a little bit less. Same with Zion. I've seen MVP Zion. I've seen or, or what looks like an MVP candidate Zion, the run, the win streak last season, the the the, the windmill dunk. What yeah. does that look like when Brandon's on the floor? That means it can't just be Zion in the post or or or, or in the corner. That means it can't be Brandon is operating at one spot or a floor, standing in the corner, he doesn't have the ball. How do you bring the best parts out of them, what you've seen of them individually as solo acts, together? Man, I think a lot of it, you said, like you, you said, Brandon standing in the corner. I think a lot of it has to do with movement, movement, motion. I think if you want to bring, you know, we've seen the best of player one, we've seen the best of player 14, but we ain't seen them together. I think you got, I think you can. You can involve a lot of pick and rolls in that action. Like you could, you could have it set up to where, you know, whoever whoever you want to set the pick. Brandon can set the pick for Zion. Zion can set the pick for Brandon. Uh, Trey can set a pick for Brandon. Zion can be in a dunker spot. It can just be so much motion, so much movement that the Pelicans have as far as like what they can implement it into this season, especially with you know adding who they added, offensive minds and and, and the like. I think that. If you wanna, if you wanna keep them, the the one thing you cannot do though, is you can't just put Zion on the three point line, and let him stand there. You can't put Brandon on the three point line and let him stand there. The other thing that that, that you cannot do is the ISO ball got to die. The one on one isolation half court. I know how Brandon gets into his shots, and I know you know he's a willing passer. But as far as like how he gets to his shots is more ISO ball. Brandon gonna have to get his off movement too. He gonna have to get his off the catch. He gonna have to get his off catch and shoots. He got he can get his off curls and pin downs. He can get his off backdoor cuts. So many, you know what I'm saying? I, when you think of Brandon, Brandon is six nine. Like Brandon, Brandon can post sixty five percent of the people guarding him up. Where and 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 he's he's athletic enough, sneaky athletic to 
be able to get to the rim and finish over the top of most defenses. I ain't got to talk about what Zion could do as far as like athleticism. Like that, you you know who he is, you know what he do. But the thing about him is he's so much of a better passer and playmaker than he gets credit for, but he doesn't get the chance to have the ball in his hands because, like you said, if Brandon cooking, he got it. If Zion cooking, he got it. It's no cohesive, it's not been cohesiveness there. And granted, it's only been 93 games. So, you know, you don't really get a lot of cohesiveness in that. Yeah, and that actually leads to my second point. That was my first point. Look, I didn't put CJ in this in this fold because to be fair, we haven't we haven't even gotten a chance to see how CJ looks with enough games playing next to Zion and Brandon. We've seen some games with Zion, we've seen a majority of games with Brandon, but we haven't seen it together. And I'm less worried about him because his ability to move off the ball, his um, him playing with the high usage superstar in the past, him being in New Orleans, playing with some of the guys that you know, playing with better players, and his ability to shoot. I ain't worried about that. But second point, um, kind of leads or carries on what you were saying about um, principles, habits, the organization of things how fluid they are, um, the structure of it all. Because without it, when you have so many players or a, a trio of players that are as talented um, when it comes to isolation basketball, the ability to create and break down defenders, sometimes that's what it goes to. And we've seen the team struggle in periods while um, some games that work, some days it doesn't. And that's pretty much for every team to a respect. But right. – the ball has to move, and it's energy with it. It's, it. It it has to. So I think one of the one of the things that this that this new coaching staff, and I think when I say this new coaching staff, I'm talking about bringing in James Borrego, who's going to have a new a new set of ideas, principles, habits, running the offense for the most part. Um, how is that going to benefit this team? So I'm talking about okay. Um, even with guys in and out the lineup, sure, the hierarchy may change if this player sits or that player sits. But even sliding a new guy into a different space, do you have familiar plays, familiar setups, familiar things that you are going to that you have practiced versus just figuring it out on the go? And I don't talk about early in the season. A lot of teams are figuring it out. Later in the season, what are your principles? What are your um, your your set actions, no matter what, that you are running every single game? Creativity. Um, what are things that you will not stand for that, that you will completely um abide by no matter what, no matter who's out there? There there are a handful of teams, I think more than a handful of teams that run that kind of setup. Doesn't matter who's playing for Golden State, the ball moving, the ball <laughs> moving. They don't have a clay, they will have somebody that they trust to mimic certain kind of movements and certain kind of setups to fall like they. You know, I mean, I, I and they have a system. Yeah. They have a system that they that they practice over and over and over again. They are prepared for almost any kind of situation. Certain things you can't mimic with Steph. I understand that. Certain things you can't mimic with other guys. But you have to have plans, and it can't just when shit breaks down. ISO basketball structure, organization, and things that guys when people walk into the gym, they know this is who we are. This is who we're gonna be. An identity. Man, you literally took. You, you, bro, that was <laughs> that was well said. Uh, I hate to give you credit, but that was very well said. I really feel like you you said one of the things that I was thinking. I, I really wanted to make this point, but you said it. But I, I mean, I can kind of like, I guess, enhance it a little bit. For it's one, crazy. I mean, <laughs> that was crazy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, the ball has energy, and. The, that's the point I was going to make with Golden State, and you literally just said it. I know we don't have a Steph on his team, but it really does not matter. It does not matter if a Steph is on your team or not because you can literally see – you can see in any team, any game you play, like the more ball movement you have, the more other guys feel involved, the more the ball has energy. Yo, like everybody just seemed to catch fire. The dude on the bench who been shooting 30% from three the entire year, he's going to go 8 for 11 tonight. Because he feel involved, Jonas Valanciunas, who who has not gotten a, the 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 fair end of the minutes uh, from his career standpoint last year, right? For us, when you you saw when you got him involved, you saw what happened. He looked like 
he was a guy that was formidable in the post. He was a guy you had to you had to account for. Before that, he looked like a shell of himself because he didn't have confidence. He felt like the team didn't have confidence in him. The ball wasn't finding him. He was only relied to get rebounds. He wasn't reaping the benefits on the other end. You look at the the most important one of the most important things you said, and shout out to Five because Five harped on this a lot last year. He wrote an article about it. He wrote an article about it. Scheme schematically. I I identify. Ident- what do you identify as? Who are you? What do you do well? What don't you do well? Those are things I think you need to know in order to figure out how you're going to be successful. If you don't have nobody on your team that can shoot threes, how are we going to space these guys out and 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 and, and beat them from three? You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't do that. Obviously, you're going to have to go alternate route to figure out, like, what is it that we do well? With this team, I mean, you got a bunch of ISO scores. You got a bunch of mid, mid-range mid scores. Um, you got two very good ones in BI and CJ. Uh, Zion is is uh, an enigma of basketball standards. You really don't – I mean, it, it's hard to just account for that guy. Like, that guy is lightning in a bottle. Uh, Trey is shooting from 40 feet. You know what I'm saying? I, I I think that you have to find a way to blend those talents and figure out what you do well, and and how to get how to get to that point. To be honest, I think all of that though is gonna start with defense. Uh, Birdman or Master P? Birdman, easy. That's not even a question for me. Birdman's my idol. I wouldn't be here without him. And his name is Brian. I don't know who Birdman is. It's all about at least and athletics. We controlling this shit, and that's how we feel from the heart. I run through a wall. I run through a wall for that shit. All right, number three. Number three here. Got a something else. It's almost like I didn't even. Like, I gotta let y'all know. I didn't tell Lito what my like points of emphasis were. He's kind of just stealing shit without knowing. Maybe that's chemistry. Why the big dogs eat, there needs to be consistent plans for others. So I know this is the I know that CJ, Zion, and BI are going to have a lot of opportunity as creators and have the basketball in their hands a lot. However, there needs to be plans, consistent plans, and ways to involve other talents. Because you have others that are talented, specifically offensively, that you need to have involved especially if you want them to play defense on the other end and do some of the little shit that this team needs to needs to be better at this year to win games. Jonas Valanciunas is one guy, right? You're his attorney. I understand that he may not be – in, in, in some lineups, he, he's going to be the fourth option. In, mo, you know, in, in the starting lineup, he's third, fourth option. No, I'm sorry, fourth, maybe fifth option, depending on Trey's not starting. But if Trey was starting, let's say Herb goes out, let's say Trey's the one that's starting, hey, man – He's gonna be the he's gonna be the fourth option, right? He you know he might be the fifth. Like, how do you find a way to still get him involved and keep him active and keep him happy? He's not expecting to shoot the ball twenty times, but what do you do early on to keep him going? Big men are a lot about motor and they're a lot about involvement. They're a lot like running backs. You feed them early, you get the best of them late. That's just how it goes. That's crazy. I apologize. Um. So, <laughs> but yo, five. Speaking of five, and I'm a. I'm going to fuck this up a little bit, so I want to make sure that I don't um, I don't mess up the quote. Five and Willie Green were having a conversation post-game, or there was a question asked about Trey Murphy and involvement. Mm-hmm. And, and to Willie Green's point, for the most part, I think he said something along the lines, forgive me if I get this wrong, he mentioned um, Trey pretty much gets his involvement out of the floor of the offense. If, I, I, and if I'm wrong... Y'all can correct me, but I believe it was something like that along the lines. Okay. Um, no, you got to find ways. You have to have structured every game situations where you are looking actively to get him involved in plays and setups, actions, counteractions, whatever the case may be. Use his strengths, not just as a floor spacer or someone who has to get it in transition. If that's the case, you know, um, I would hope that that's communicated to him early on. <laughs> you know, not so the dream. Herb Jones, okay. What do you have for him that's not just sitting in a corner? What do you have for him to um, allow him to uh, have the basketball in his hands and use some of his point guard strengths from time to time as a passer? Are you giving him more opportunities with, with the second unit to create now and then? What are you doing with him off ball? These are the questions that I have. Um, 
this should be an easy fix to me. Honestly. Yeah, I, I, I mean, what are you doing with the other guys that also are going to play a big role with this, you know, in this team that outside of the big three, you are going to need when one or two of those guys are out. Why wait till guys are injured to show that you are getting them involved and giving them an opportunity to make plays for you on a consistent basis? Man, you know it's called a basketball team. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it's a team sport. It's not like Brandon, go get yours. Zion, get yours. CJ, you do your thing. Everybody else, shut the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? It's literally like it's a team game. And regardless if guys are scoring the ball or not, it's the involvement that's important. I always like to tell Justin this. For me, like, a lot of – like, I see – I know the end result is, like, where everybody, like, get hypes over. It's all about the process for me. I love to see the process of things. I love to see how – I love to see shit get built from the ground up. I love to, I love to see the foundation get set. And, <clears throat> you know, I think – you know, I know – I'm going to say this. I know Brandon well. Brandon isn't playing well feeble-wise or he's not being used well, however you want to spend that. But for me, the most important part of him of that, honestly, was for him to go and see how to play with other talent and see how what it's like to not necessarily be the man. You did a show about this, Brandon the glue guy, right? So Brandon comes back, he, take, he takes those tactics, and he understands, yo, like, yo, man, I know her. I know Herb over there in that corner, but I know her. You know what I'm saying? He's a natural guard. He played point guard a lot. You know what I'm saying? High school, college, he was the 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 he set the table yeah. for a lot of people. Yo, I know if we give her the ball, like he ain't gonna do nothing reckless with it. I might end up with a better shot. CJ might end up with a better shot. You know what I'm saying? Set, let let her let her be uh <clears throat> let her be free throw line junction, set the pick for somebody. Let 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 him make post entry passes, get him involved. It's not all about shooting, and it's not all about getting the shot that gets people involved. Involvement is involvement, period. That's making the extra pass. That's literally being a guy to make the hot get. You know, I might not get the assist, but maybe I'll get the hockey assist. That's that's maybe like letting Trey get the rebound and just bring it up, not having to kick it to CJ, not having to kick it to Brandon. Let him make the, the decision. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, we've been playing, we all been playing basketball forever. Like, mm-hmm. I, it isn't not something that I just picked up yesterday. Also, again, schematically, who are you? What do you do? How do you identify? What do we do good? What do we don't we do well? I think these are things that you have to answer, and then you get the answer on like how you get those other guys involved. But I can tell you what we did last year did not work. You literally can't let the big three eat and then everybody else just get spoon fed. Like, son, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you got a, anybody out there, if you got a dog, if you eating food, your dog is gonna be staring at you. I dog, I get up sometimes. I'm like, damn, did I feed them? Is food in their bowl? You know what I'm saying? Because you got to understand, like, they going to go harder for you once they figure out, yo, you know what? He got me. He might, man, he might, maybe he ain't give me, maybe, maybe he ain't give me nothing special to eat today. I ain't get the extra food. I ain't get the extra pass. I ain't get, a, I ain't get the extra shots. But I know tomorrow if I keep working, or I know, you know what I'm saying? I know if I keep working, I know if I work hard, I know this is going to work out. Especially like with big men. It costs you nothing to give the, your big man the first the first entry pass of the game. Let him decide to do it. It costs you nothing. You got forty other possessions. Drake Drake got an album dropping um, any minute now called "For All the Dogs." So I see what you did there. Um, uh, Rewind by Nas, or I got a story to tell by Big. Nas, the greatest rapper to ever lived, is hurt. That's not what I asked you. Nas is the best storyteller to ever walk this bum-ass planet. So is it Rewind or I Got a Story to Tell by Big? Rewind is the greatest song of all time. Rewind. Got it. All right, Um. last thing, and we out of here. The young guys need chances to fail if you are going to play them. They need leash. Like, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> so, look, if you decide, I've heard a lot about Willie Green and Borrego. Now, in regards to changes, I don't think we mentioned it for those who don't know. And I don't even if we mentioned it at the beginning of the show, but if not, I'm going to repeat it. James mm-hmm. Borrego is in. Aaron Miles is in. 
Um, mm. Former assistant with Golden State, Boston as well, I believe. You used, used to play uh, Kansas, if I'm right. Um, so. You brought him over. You brought James Borrego, former, um, used to be over in Charlotte. He's here. I think before that, maybe San Antonio, if I remember it correctly. James Borrego is now in New Orleans. Um, outside of that, Casey Hill, who was the offensive coordinator for the most part last season, has been demoted. I don't know. Or if he hasn't been demoted, his his role is a little bit different now. Whatever, whatever it is. Um, and then you still got Collins possibly running the rotations, but also a big part of the defense as well. Now, and th- there's some other parts on the coaching staff that I am not remembering right now. Um, Fred Benson, of course, is one of those guys. But no matter what the case may be, if you decide as a group that you are going to put Jordan Hawkins out there, for example, and you are going to put out second-year Dyson Daniels out there, you have to allow them to fail. It can't be no having them out there and yanking them, you know, out of the game, putting them back in the game, putting them in situations and weird spots and setups that they ain't ready for. It can't be, you know, um, them having a good game and then not getting minutes to match the next. It can't be just matchup related. It can't be based off of their performance. No, especially with a guy like Jordan Hawkins. He's going to fail because he is a shooter. Some nights he's going to have it, and sometimes some nights he ain't going to have it. And with dudes like that, don't break their confidence and waste a year. If you ain't right. ready for it and you don't think he's going to play, send his ass to the G League and, and, and make him play there. But if the talk about one, about shooting being addressed is heavy off of a rookie who – one of the things that, that, that was mentioned is that, yo, we're excited about bringing in Jordan Hawkins because you can't play in the system he came from in college at UConn without being able to defend. That's what they say. So they think he's going to be okay on that on that side of the floor. They're excited about adding the shooting. But what happens if he doesn't catch on quickly? He still has some weight to gain. His body ain't 100% ready, and he's going to have nice weight. He's not shooting well. So if, if it's a Trey Murphy situation basically all over again, are you going to have the patience to let him out there? Don't ruin his first year. Don't steal or rob him of minutes b- due to him doing what most rookies do. Make a decision with him, and regardless of what you do, stick to it. Same with Dyson Daniels in year two, as far as I'm concerned. You know, Drake got this song called Free Smoke. Yeah. And you mentioned something about Jordan Hawkins, and you said he still got to grow into his body. He ain't got enough strength. So is it Drake started the song off, and he said, is it the strength or you're feeling overthrown by your pain? Right? So I'm saying that to say the coaches got to give them free smoke. Listen. It's free smoke. Let let them boys get in the game. Let them. Hey, listen. If you put somebody, yo, if, say Chris, if I've been doing this particular job for thirty years, it's your first day on the job, and you doing, I'm literally putting you in a spot where I would be at. What you think gonna happen? You gonna fuck it up. I'm. How would I? How would I get mad at you? How would I get upset at you? You have no NBA experience. Even let's just say, even trade right. Let's just say you've been in the league three years. You still have no NBA experience. You, you still have no NBA experience. You still are a young player trying to figure out his way through all of this shit, and you're on your way to a bag of money, right? You 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 are literally still a puppy in human form as far as a basketball player. Like you, you, you have so much more to go and grow. Free smoke, man. The thing with Jordan, Jordan's a shooter, like you said, ain't gonna be on every night. It just don't work like that. It, it don't work like that. Steph had to battle through a lot. I'm not comparing him to Steph. But Steph had to battle through a lot of things in his NBA career to get to where he at. Steph had to battle through in, uh, injuries, through shooting slumps. He had to battle through the team losing confidence in his ability. He was almost traded here. He he had to battle through uh, Monte Ellis. You know what I'm saying? Like, he had a lot of shit and that wasn't working in his favor. But the thing is, like, when he put two and two together, when he when he got everything working, he figured that shit out. And the, the coaching staff, they they stuck with him. You know what I'm saying? Like they stuck with him. Mark Jackson took him to church and he anointed his people all on all that shit. But that ain't important. I'm just saying with him, yo, if you ain't gonna play him, send him to the G League. Bro, when you were saying that, I was literally writing that down on a piece of paper. Send him to the G League if you're not gonna play him. Do not don't don't rush him into this thing because he's gonna have a long career because he has the one skill. That has longevity in it. Like athleticism wanes. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like speed leaves 
bro, if you could shoot, you can have a 10, 15 year career because you, it, everybody's always going to make room for a shooter. You always going to have space for that guy. And I, and I will say, I understand that there are certain elements of all the things that were mentioned, all of the elements that are out of Borrego's hands, out of Aaron Miles' hands, out of Willie Green's hands, right? He can't, they can't determine who goes, like they can't decide, hey, Jordan's going to be in the, in the G League, for example. It's not their call. They can't make certain, certain roster changes or moves. But as a whole, they all have to get together one way or one way or another and decide if this is what we're going with, we're sticking with it. Unless this kid, the young guys are struggling and you have to pull them out to save their confidence. But you can't be the one that messes up with, you know, that that um, makes it inconsistent, especially when it comes to a shooter. Uh, Fab or. Damn, I forgot that fast. Fab or T.I.? <laughs> T.I. Fab or Jewels? Damn, that's a good question. What Fab are we talking about? I ain't, I ain't, I ain't ask all that. I, I just asked Fab, Fab or Jewels. Jewels single-handedly put 9-11 on his back. He, he fought back for the towers personally, so. <laughs> I saw that. I saw that earlier earlier today. That that's that's kind of funny. Uh one more and I think and I think we good. Wiz or Wale? Wiz Khalifa? Wale. You hate you hate Wiz Khalifa. That that is unbelievable. I don't I, I'm about to I about to ask you Wale or Jay Sean, but I kind of knew how that how that was gonna go. Jay Sean? Oh man, I, I, who the fuck is Jay Sean? <laughs> A big Sean? Who the fuck is Jay Sean? <laughs> I'm about to say you have me. Who this was fact. <laughs> fuck is that guy? <laughs> hey, what, listen. What? 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 what Wale, was, I, I, Wale, one of the most underappreciated artists of all time. Crit or Wale? Oh my God, yo. See, we see not nah. You gotta. What are we talking nah, about? No, I, I don't. No, I don't. No, I, I, I don't have to explain. We got about a few seconds here before I no, gotta get to Justin sub, reading the ass. Sub, sub. Nigga, just answer the question. Wale, Wale, or I mean, you, you already kept him alive already. Wale or King Remembered in Time? Well, <laughs> all right, man. Uh, yo, shout out to everybody, man. That uh, that's been rocking with us, man. Doing shows. Lito got got some. He got an appointment to get to right after this. Um, you know what I'm saying? So you know, we just recording, trying to stay busy, trying to stay active, trying to you know, working through pain, working through bullshit. Come on here and talk. So yo, let let me know. Let us know in the comments. What other you know? What other tweak? What other coaching staff changes would you like? What other changes do you think needs to be? Needs to be brought to the fold, even if it's not by the coaching staff. You want to talk Willie? We're going to do that at some point. But yes, let us know what other elements do you think needs to be embraced, needs to be changed for this team to, su to succeed. I don't care what it is. Let's talk about it in the comments. Appreciate it as always. Let's get to the DraftKings love from our sponsor. And we out after that. The With the NFL collect. season right around the corner, nonstop football action is in sight. You can get in on the action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Right now, new customers can bet just $5 and score $200 in bonus bets instantly. Nobody's missing out on the action this season. All DraftKings customers can take advantage of two new offers every game day this September. Life's more fun when you're in on the action. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app before kickoff. Use code BOOT to get $200 in bonus bets instantly when you just bet $5 on any NFL bet. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code BOOT. The crown is yours. Justin Jermaine. I'm really disappointed in myself for not being able to ask little tougher questions. And I thought that some of these were going to be more difficult than they were. And then I thought about it after I asked him. And I said, damn, so I had to come back with him. I promise y'all next time I'm going to be better for Lito, for myself. We out of here. I will holler at y'all maybe in a couple of days when I think about something else. Najee. In the building. I told you last time, get with us. Well, get out of here, man. Is out.